Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Oh man, whoever's in there, like we're gonna we're gonna roll, we're gonna I'm gonna be aggressive, we're gonna push the ball down the field and try to go win the game. Yeah, Cowboys came close to winning their first preseason game. No Dak Prescott Saturday night, but a lot of Cooper Rush. He finished 10 of 12, 83 yards. Third stringer Will Greer also got to see a lot of action. He passed for 199 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. The Jaguars' Nathan Rourke had that wild touchdown pass. The defense had him, then they didn't. Oh, you know, there's going to be a lot of film study going on this week after that loss. Jags won it 28-23. And here's a look at the final two preseason games for the Houston Texans and Dallas. It's Miami at Houston on Saturday, then Dallas and Seattle on Saturday as well. Nine o'clock, and the Cowboys and Texans only have two more total. It was an inspirational, emotional, and fun night Saturday for the Spurs and the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Tony Parker made it the big three again, along with Coach Popovich being inducted in the Hall of Fame. Coach Pop got emotional several times, one describing his start in basketball, and again, when talking about his family, Pop had his moments, but some of the best came when he talked about learning from the Spurs presenting him at the Hall of Fame. Tony Parker had his wife, kids with him as well, and his parents, and of course, the French Mafia. Former Silver Star Guard Spurs assistant coach and current Las Vegas Aces head coach Becky Hammond did not get to the hall until early Saturday morning. She had a game the night before coaching her team with the best record in the WNBA. We caught up with Becky on the red carpet prior to her acceptance speech and she got all choked up several times, including the part when she was talking about pop. You display excellence, you expect excellence and model how to become excellent in your everyday routine and how you go about your work. You spoke courage into me with a phone call as I was getting ready to coach that first summer league team in 2015. You said, just be you, you're gonna be great. And you've texted me that. I don't even know if you know how many times you've actually texted me that. Just be you, just be you, just be you. And you've changed the trajectory of my life and of so many other girls and young women. Thank you, I love you. See Pop getting emotional. That's the most emotional you're ever going to see from him. Tears in his eyes, blowing a kiss to Becky. If you have not seen these speeches from Pop, from Tony, or from Becky, you need to go. I, they're all over the internet. You can find the whole speech. I would, if you're a real Spurs fan, you need to go watch these speeches because they they were something else. They were they were enjoy to watch. And bring some tissues. Yeah, you might bring a tissue or two. <laughs> Well, we have a lot more to come. A company is recalling some cookie dough because there could be an unexpected ingredient hiding in the product. Details after the break. Shell is facing a lawsuit for a massive fire at one of its chemical plants. The state of Texas is suing the oil giant and a subsidiary of Mexican state oil company Bemex. Together, they own and operate the chemical and refinery complex near Houston that went up in flames in May. The Wall Street Journal reports the state officials allege the fire caused mass quantities of contaminants in the air. The pollutants also allegedly flowed into nearby waterways. The Texas Commission on Environmental Quality is asking for unspecified monetary damages and other relief. And we're getting some grim insights on the toll the war in Ukraine is having. Officials say about 500 children have died so far. In addition, more than 1,000 are hurt and more than 1,500 have been affected. All this comes as a result of Russia's full-scale armed aggression. That's according to Ukraine's prosecutor general's office. Officials say the numbers are not final as they are still working to gauge the impact in some areas seen heavy fighting. We now go to Atlanta, Georgia, where former President Donald Trump has his legal team could be dealing with new charges related to the 2020 election. The Fulton County District Attorney just wrapped up a two and a half year investigation. ABC's Rena Roy reports she will now present her case to a grand jury as early as today. A potential fourth indictment is looming for former President Donald Trump, this time in Georgia, after a two and a half year investigation into his alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election results in the state. He lost this state and he continues to say he didn't lose it. Sources tell ABC News Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis is presenting her case to a grand jury today. In 2022, a Georgia special grand jury heard testimony from more than 75 witnesses, including Georgia's Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, who Trump called after the election, allegedly pressuring Raffensperger to find the votes needed to win. I just want to find uh, 
11,780 votes. Trump made two other phone calls to state officials in late 2020 and early 2021. Trump tried to get Willis disqualified, but the courts have not gone along. She appears likely to charge him and a number of his allies, the former president denying any wrongdoing in this case. We don't take plea deals because I did nothing wrong. It's called election interference. Also testifying before the special grand jury in 2022, Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, who was on that call with Raffensperger. And now several more witnesses have publicly confirmed they were called in to testify, including journalist George Chitty, who reported that he had stumbled upon a meeting of alternate Trump electors at the state capitol and says that he was kicked out. Trump is still the leading Republican candidate for 2024 and tells ABC he is not concerned about holding that lead. Rena Roy, ABC News, Atlanta. President Biden's son, Hunter Biden's legal issues continue. His lawyers are now saying that the deal they struck with the special counsel, David Weiss, regarding a felony gun charge is, quote, valid and binding. That statement came in a court filing this weekend. However, there's no word if Weiss agrees with that stance. Meanwhile, Weiss's legal team said in a court filing last week that the trial will likely be needed. Hunter Biden's lawyers say that it's going to trial might be avoided and they hope to reach a resolution before that potentially happens. And outside with Livecam 93, happy first day of school to many of the kids in our area. Many kids heading back to school and, you know, ah, thank goodness the air conditioning works in a lot of our <laughs> buildings because, man, it is hot out there today. It's already 93 degrees at the airport. And take a look at the forecast for the remainder of the afternoon. We're going to get up to uh, about 103 this afternoon for the high, right around 4 uh, We'll be at 103. We're actually getting up to 104, pardon me, for the high today. Uh, with uh, temperatures struggling to fall this evening, we'll be still at 95 by 9 p.m. Here's an interesting graphic for you. Take a look at this August so far. Every single day has been above 100 degrees. In fact, we're 5.7 degrees above average for the month so far. This is the hottest stretch in recorded history for San Antonio and records date back to the 1880s. We've had 48 100 degree days and today we'll make 49. So that's the bad news. Here's some positive weather headlines that we're going to talk about in the forecast. There's a cool front moving through Texas. It's not going to get cold here, but there is a small chance for rain tomorrow as that front falls apart as it moves through San Antonio and we'll check on the tropics. There are now some areas to watch. Of course, a hurricane is not positive news, but when it comes to the tropics, we can get some harmless low pressure systems that may hope to uh, change up our weather pattern in the extended period. And speaking of the extended period, that heat high, there are some indications that it will weaken next week. We'll talk more in depth about these coming up in just a bit. David, Tiffany. Thank you, Sarah. Now to the 13 year old boy who survived a nearly 100 foot fall from the north rim of the Grand Canyon. First responders risking their own safety to save him. As Janae Norman tells us, now the boy is telling his story and sharing his gratitude. Falling nearly 100 feet over the side of a cliff into the Grand Canyon, and this morning, living to tell the harrowing story. I almost died. I was like inches away from death at that time. 13-year-old Wyatt Kaufman was vacationing with his mom, Carol, as they explored the bright angel point. Taking pictures with my cell phone and my camera, and then I went all the way up all the way up onto the very top of the point and it's flat out there and you can see the entire canyon. It is beautiful up there. He says as other visitors came and went getting their own pictures, he was trying to stay out of the way when he slipped and tumbled down. Once they were getting up and they were done with the picture and I kind of stood up, I lost my grip and that's when I started to fall back. I cannot remember anything past that point. High winds making a helicopter rescue impossible. So search and rescue crews resorting to using ropes and a Stokes basket to reel the teen back to safety. Lucky to be alive. A 44 year old man died after accidentally falling 200 feet in the same area a year ago, which is notoriously narrow. The Grand Canyon, the scene of nearly 80 over the edge incidents in the last decade.
just remember it only takes one moment of inattentiveness or one slip to potentially fall up to several hundreds of feet. Now on his way home to North Dakota, the teen saying he's a little beaten, bruised, but grateful. I want to thank uh, the park rangers, the park, the national park, everybody that helped me get out of there and help me be able to be alive. Incredible story. Now, Nestle USA is voluntarily recalling some of its chocolate chip cookie dough. The company says two batches of the break and bake bar products potentially contain wood fragments. The affected batches were produced in April. No illnesses or injuries have been reported. Anyone who purchased the dough should return it for replacement or refund. Nestle says it is confident this is an isolated issue and apologies for the inconvenience. If you are planning to travel Labor Day weekend, you might want to add a little extra cash to your bank accounts because gas prices are on the rise again. The cost of regular is above $4 a gallon in 11 states. That's according to AAA. Others are nearing that threshold, and the national average is up to $3.85. That's the highest it's been in about 10 months, and it's up two cents from just last week. Oil prices are up because Russia and Saudi Arabia have been cutting the global supply. In the U.S., some refineries are even struggling because of that heat. If you book some last-minute summer trips, that procrastination might translate to savings. Why you may see ticket prices drop. As summer winds down, you might notice last minute trips by air may not break the bank. And if you're looking forward to the holiday travel season, you could get some good deals on those airfares as well. CNN's Pete Muntin with why prices are seeing a drop. We're in a bit of a plateau when it comes to domestic airfares. And travel experts say now is really the sweet spot if you're trying to fit in one more trip for the summer. In fact, you can even get a good deal in September and October, which are typically the shoulder seasons. Here's the latest data from travel site Hopper. It says the average domestic round trip right now is $257. That is down 11% compared to last year. It's even lower than what we saw back in 2019 before the pandemic. But this is where it gets really interesting. A flight from the U.S. to Europe, $813 round trip on average, according to Hopper. That is down a little bit compared to last year. A lot of factors going into this. Jet fuel has gone down a little bit. Airlines have beefed up capacity as they've, as they've rebounded from the pandemic. And competition has gone up a little bit. And Hopper says that all means good things for travelers. Though we are surprised how low fares have gotten this year, given how high they were last year, all of the factors at play that are pushing down airfare are really good for consumers. Here are the trending destinations right now, according to Hopper. Melbourne, Florida, Manchester, New Hampshire, Reno, Buffalo, Charleston, South Carolina. A lot of places served by those ultra low cost carriers. All right, some other big tips for you. If you are trying to book, you want to head and do it now. If you wait until this time next month, you'll see ticket prices really start to shoot up because of the holidays. So if you book soon, that will beat the holiday rush. I would like to travel to a cooler place. Okay, but. <laughs> Do you know, here's one for you. At five o'clock this morning, it was 75 degrees in the hill country. Wow, yes, I do know that. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty nice. Yeah. But then it quickly warmed up. <laughs> Very it lasts, but it's hey, we, nice. I honestly, you know, in the evenings, it's not too bad for a walk either. Humidity is low. There's a nice breeze. It's just right now through about 5, 6 p.m. that we deal with the most heat. The aquifer is unfortunately down seven tenths of a foot over the last 24 hours. There's some good news, though, in the pollen count molds remain low at 120. That's about the only good news right now is that the pollen count is low, even though the temperatures are high. Coming up, we're going to talk about a weak cool front moving across Texas a small chance for rain tomorrow and I'll check on the tropics which are starting to show some uh, signs of life details ahead I'm just gonna say I'm starting to enjoy it <laughs> yeah, I might as well enjoy the heat a Cheer. pool sounds nice. Though. I I appreciate your positivity, yeah, David. Well. I'm trying to think positive too. Yeah. Hey, it looks like a famous movie outside. Y'all remember the good, the bad, the ugly? Clint Eastwood? Yep. Take a look. <laughs>
<laughs> outside what, right now. What's you the good, see. what's the bad, and what's the ugly? The We're going to start with the ugly. Okay. The ugly is 104 today. Okay, that's pretty ugly. The bad is that it's going to continue to be well into the triple digits over the next seven days. Okay, so here comes the good. The good is I'm seeing some indications of a weather pattern change next wow, week. Wow, wow. Well, there you go. Good job, dude. <laughs> Maybe maybe singing isn't isn't our, our, our no. career of choice. 90 degrees outside right now. Southwest winds at about six miles per hour. Humidity is coming down right now as it typically is in the afternoon. And just a reminder, fire danger is high this afternoon. So let's do our part to avoid creating uh, or spreading grass fires. 91 in Del Rio, 91 in Yavaldi, 91 in Hondo. Kerrville, you're at 93 today. The clouds from this morning have dissipated. There's only some wispy cirrus clouds moving through Holotus and Bernie right now. Now in Bernie, it's 90 degrees. And for the rest of the afternoon, we'll be at 100 by 2 just in the next hour or so. 104 for the high temperature today. And then later on tonight, that's when it's going to feel great if you want to take a walk outside across your neighborhood closer to sunset. Sunset's at 815 tonight. It'll still be in the 90s, but with a breeze and low humidity, honestly, not all that bad. All right, here's the good, okay? Take a look at Amarillo and Lubbock right now. It's 75 in Amarillo and Lubbock. Now the bad. We are not going to see much of a temperature drop. In fact, no temperature drop from this front because it's going to fall apart as it moves south th toward San Antonio. Uh, the uh, there is a small chance, though, for a little bit of isolated rain tomorrow south of San Antonio. But again, the heat high is going to remain the big dominant weather pattern that's going to keep us in the triple digits. So highs today, not all that bad in North Texas, but around South Central Texas. Yeah, it's going to be 107 in Laredo, 105 in Del Rio. Here's that front at about five o'clock this evening. As it moves south, it's going to fall apart, bring in drier air from the north. So act a lot like a dry line. So tomorrow winds are actually going to be from the north. It's going to be drier and fire danger will still be just as high because it's going to be just as hot. However, as that front falls apart to the south. There is a chance for an isolated storm from Carissa Springs to Pleasanton out toward a uh, southern Wilson County into Carnes County and nearer to the coast. There's only a 10% chance around San Antonio to see an isolated downpour in the afternoon, but a small chance is there. And for our friends south of San Antonio, you have a slightly better chance 20 to 30% during the peak heat of the afternoon tomorrow, right around five o'clock. Now the ugly. All right, that big old heat high is going to move back overhead in the coming days and so we're going to be even hotter on Thursday 106. We got to get through this week. There is a small potential uh, that next week could be better. Uh, so keep that in mind. We'll keep you posted. But tomorrow, 79 in the morning, 94 at noon, 103 for the high temperature and a 10% chance for a stray shower storm in the afternoon. North winds tomorrow at 10 to 15 miles per hour. This is also the time of the year where uh, hurricane activity really starts to ramp up. For the first time in a while, the National Hurricane Center is watching two areas off the coast of Africa, which have a 20 to 30 percent chance of developing into an, a, a tropical system. We'll have to let you know uh, if those develop. We'll keep you posted. But for now, just buckle down for this week. By Sunday, it'll be our 55th 100 degree day for the year. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. I want to see some of those school pictures. Oh, yes. Does Fiona have some ready? Do you have some ready? <laughs> You'll see some in the show. Oh. Yes, you will. Well, there's the tease. <laughs> well, we are. We do have back to school stuff to share with you, but we are going to start out with some great food because it's Culinary Week, which means you get to expand your palate with some great prices at restaurants around town. And La Cantera executive chef Christian Brassfield joins me. And this is just a sampling, right, of what you're going to have? Just a little bit. What is that? This is our honey chicken and waffle with breakfast potatoes and a jalapeno. Your gravy. Oh my god, there's nothing I don't like about everything you just said. All right, and yes, it's back to school time for a lot of kids, so we would love to see those back to school photos. All you have to do is scan that QR code on your screen, and we can't wait to share the cuteness in the show. And check out these extreme sports photos a local photographer can take of your kids. So we catch them in action and share a deal on senior pictures you won't want to miss. One of the great things about back to school is, of course, 
the cool technology you get as well. And we have a deal on tablets for the student in your life. The tech guy is here and he's gonna share even more cool stuff, including an augmented reality thing that will blow your mind, literally, okay? And our deal of the day, don't forget, we have one for students and teachers for a great deal on a treat. And one of the newest food trucks in town is sharing some delicious food. We're gonna tell you who it is and where you can get it.